Hi gang, Rob here. It is the evening of 7 October 2013. I got an interesting video for you tonight, I think. <clears throat> this is sort of a a tag video from surprising knives. Knives that you expected to be one thing when you ordered them or bought them and then after you spent some time with them they they really surprised you. And he asked that uh, uh, that we make a video and, and since video responses are no longer in existence in the YouTube universe uh, to either attach them to a PM or make them known to him somehow so his subscribers and uh, his part of the YouTube community can uh, communicate with them about theirs. So I'm going to tell you mine and what I've done is I've included two knives that were unexpectedly bad and two knives that were unexpectedly good. And uh, I don't have the ones that were unexpectedly bad anymore because they were bad and I sold them first and oh boy these are these are probably going to get me in trouble um, with, with some people, but let's look at them. My number two uh, most surprisingly disappointing folding knife I've ever bought. Yes, the Spyderco Delica 4. Um, a knife that any TN peer had to own. Uh, you know, regarded widely in our knife community and certainly by Nut and Fancy as one of the one of the very best EDC knives on the planet. Uh, I beg to differ. In fact, I have inscribed here at the top of my picture of a Delica Four quote a twenty five dollar value for only sixty dollars, and that's really what I believe about the Delica. Uh, We've got a, a fiberglass reinforced nylon handle with some really, really cheesy stamped steel liners nested into the FRN. Uh, that handle construction, in my experience, and I've owned two of these knives, uh, and I'll tell you why in just a second. One of the two, uh, the first one I had, the action was actually pretty good. The replacement for the first one I had the combination of the the plastic handle and the steel liners, I never could adjust out all the side-to-side -side play without horrible binding in the pivot, and I ended up with these radial scratches uh, in the blade as it moved around. Never really could see what was doing it. It was just horrible. Um, I also had, as you'll have with most Spyderco back locks or mid locks made in Japan with the stamped VG10 blades, and I'm talking specifically, when I talk about the Delica 4 being disappointing, VG10 Sabre Ground. Lots of up and down play uh, in that lockup. Uh, I think mostly caused from either slop in the pivot pin or slop in the lock bar pin. You can actually pull up on the blade and it moves a lot. Um, I had that in both examples. Here's another reason it was disappointing. The Saber Grind, absolutely horrendous slicer, horrendous. Uh, if you ever cut up an apple with the Delica 4, you'll know what I mean. You get about to here in your cut and the apple splits because the knife can't cut. It's a, it's a splitting wedge uh, in a sub three inch blade. Not, not good for EDC in my opinion. And let's get to the reason I sent the first one back. Uh, as I sharpen the tip, um, I started to notice the sharper I got it, the more of it went away. I would start to get the point sharp and then it would just sort of disappear into garbage. And as I looked closer with the magnifying glass, there was a large pit porosity right in the spine of the blade at the tip and it just kept fraying off into bits. Uh, I sent that knife back and got my second one that had a much nicer blade no issues there, but that horrible handle. So, of the two Delicas that I owned, and those will be the last two that I own, sorry guys, um, 
I didn't ha didn't get a good one, and they're not cheap. Uh, you know, they're twice as much as a Chinese spider co. They're almost twice as much as a Rat One folder, much smaller knife. You know, I've got a K Bar uh, Dozier. I think it's like a forty sixty two. The the drop point Dozier, no liners, uh, tan handle, black coated blade, hollow ground, OS eight. Costs less than half as much as my Delica, and I still have it. It's still a great knife. Um, I love Spider Co. Don't love the Delica. Disappointing. Here's my other one. Number one most disappointing and surprisingly so folding knife of all time. You guys remember this one? Sog Aegis. This is not a Tonto. It's just cut off <clears throat> on the picture. Let's just walk around this. Another knife raved about by Nut and Fancy. I don't, uh, I don't think he took a very close look at it before he reviewed it, and I'll guarantee you he didn't use it much before he reviewed it. He called it the everything knife. Essentially what you have in the Aegis is a flash two with a different blade shape. And this is sort of a flat ground chef's knife shaped blade. Now, the one I had looked about like this, it had the Digicam handle, and it actually had a Digicam blade. It was their titanium nitride coating, but somebody had customized it and made it sort of match the handle. It was really cool. I was really happy to get it. Uh, then I used it for a few days. And here's what I found. Uh, Sog really sold this knife. And I don't know if this shows up well on camera, but it has Digi grip. So it has these very sparsely populated little nubs sticking off a sticking up off of a very slippery plastic handle i don't think it's even frn it's just like injection molded hard plastic and every now and then it has a little nub or a little field of nubs sticking up on an otherwise slippery handle i call it the digi no grip then uh let's talk about this i call it the kids toy fake arc lock uh, SOG does make some foldings, not folding knives with what they call an arc lock. It looks a lot like this. has sort of the Oscar Mayer wiener cutout uh, with a little, a, little, a little button that slides back and forth in the opening. Now on the real arc lock, it's up here by the pivot and it acts almost like a Benchmade access lock. In this knife, this just moves a really flimsy... Uh, stamped flat stock little piston kind of a lock and it's all housed in uh, tracks in this flimsy plastic handle and uh, this is a knife that if you turn this thing sideways and went like this with it at the pivot i think uh, i'll guarantee you without very much pressure at all you just snap the knife and parts would go flying uh, extremely light duty and the way this works you uh, this little button just sort of floats in the hole. You're never really sure if it's engaged or not. It's just, it's just chintzy. And then they get this stupid safety back here that you, it slides up and down when you don't want it to, and the knife will be shut when you want to open it, and uh, everybody super glues it so it doesn't work because it's stupid. Uh, let's see. I already talked about the flimsy plastic handle. I, I didn't write anything on the page about this, but it's got these really dumb neoprene or hard rubber inlays that give you no grip at all and they say sog 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 uh, and then if you're bold enough to take this knife apart which i don't suggest because you're going to have a heck of a time ever getting it back together if you look very closely if you have a flashlight and a magnifying glass you can see molded into the chintzy plastic handle the words fisher price yeah i'm just kidding about that what a piece of junk. Beautiful blade, decent steel, uh, housed in a handle that, uh, it's horrible. Horrible. Okay, those are my two nasty surprises. Now let's get to my two really good surprises. Uh, number two, most surprisingly good folding knife. Yeah. Lion Steel SR1A. What a knife. I bought this knife, as, as with many, largely on the recommendation of Nut and Fancy. I thought, man, he is so passionate about this knife, it has to be good. 
But frankly, when I bought it, I wasn't expecting a lot. Uh, I was very leery about this aluminum frame lock. Didn't know how it would behave. Didn't know how it would hold up over time. I thought the knife was a, uh, a design of form and didn't expect much function. And I thought, you know, either it'll be a cool knife to have in the collection, you know, one to sort of carry on special occasions when you're going to be around guys that appreciate cool knives, maybe pull it out and show people and have them ooh and ah. Uh, maybe it'll be a catch and release, but, you know, I'd like to have one in my hand, so I bought it. They're cheap enough, you know, under 200 bucks for a frame lock over three and a half inches, big old, big old nasty D2 blade with a beautiful finish. Uh, I, I knew all that. What I didn't know is that I would carry this knife for probably half the time for the first three months I owned it. And it's so pocketable and it's so cool and it breaks in so beautifully. I mean, the more you use it, it just develops this silkiness and it makes these beautiful noises and it cuts and it works and it looks great doing it and I love it you know it's in my top three favorite EDC knives um, great blade great value now number one and my other my other most surprisingly good knife is also a member of my top three and it's going to shock you that this is one of my most surprising but it is here it is boys Benchmade 940. This is a knife that's been on everybody's radar screen who follows nothing fancy for years. One of, the, one of his first reviewed blades. And you know, yeah, he raved about it. And he talked about how great it was. And he had like three or four of them in different styles. And I looked at the I looked at the knife in the reviews and I listened to what he said and I looked at specs and looked at pictures and I never could really grasp what was so great about this knife. I sure wasn't going to spend $150, $175 for one. An aluminum handled 3 and 7 sixteenths or 3 and a half inch blade, kind of not very broad. A lot of people say it doesn't cut. Uh, and then uh, last spring on the way to uh, on the way to Gatlinburg, Heidi and I met up with Campfire Talk to have lunch, and I think uh, I think I was delivering some knives back to him after sharpening or picking some up. I can't. I know I was delivering them back to him, and uh, he had just after all those all these years gotten in the mail his 940, which was sort of his Grail knife, and uh, he showed it to me. He's like, Rob, it's perfect. You just can't believe till you get it in your hand how great it is. Uh, he actually had me sharpen that a month or so later. And the when I reviewed the 940, my full review on this knife, it was his 940 while I had it in for sharpening. And a couple months later, I bought mine. And you guys who watch the channel know that story. Um... I didn't expect much of it. I thought it sort of deserved a spot in a serious collection because of its reputation. I thought I sort of owed it to my collection to have one. <laughs> but didn't expect to like it much. Well, the fact is, it's perfection. And you can't even describe how perfect this knife is. It is so much more than the sum of its parts. There's nothing that carries this well, that feels this good in hand, that is up to any EDC task, be it fine work or prying, for the weight. Uh, for the weight and the space it takes up in your pocket, it has no rival. And it feels so wonderful in hand. It's just perfect. Oh yeah, and can you tell it's really, really hard to operate. It's like an extension of your thumb. 
unbelievably great knife, and I did not expect it to be. I thought I would respect it. I didn't expect to love it. I love it. Uh, that's it, guys. Two and two. Surprise, surprise. The good. The bad. And the ugly cubic check. Just kidding. Love that domino. Hey, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And remember, the word is sharp. Have a good night, guys.